Thank you. My name is Stefan Pechen and I will talk about embedded RTOS in C++ and I will uh, compare two implementations of the of RTOS, one called uh, SCM RTOS and it's uh, implemented in its API is in C++ and I will com compare it with free RTOS which is implemented in C and the API is in C. So if you have any questions, by the way, uh, you can in wave your hand and interrupt uh, while I'm talking because I think it's easier to is talk while this... Talking? Pardon? Is, I don't hear you, the mic can... Is it the the mi microphone? Yeah. Is it working? Yeah, but it's for recording ah. only, so sorry. Um, yeah, so please, let's start. We deconstruct the, the, the title of the, the, the talk. We have the... RTOS called real-time operating systems. We talk about C++ and we talk about microcontrollers, which I also call MCUs, which is I use uh, some words sometimes <laughs> interchangeable. So ask if you don't know what I mean. Uh, real-time operating system, and this is from the Wiki, uh, big text from Wikipedia, where you can read about what the real-time operating system is. But we have like short uh, brief through it and it says processing without buffer delays processing times are measured in tens of seconds as a well-defined fixed time constraints uh, key characteristics of the RTOS is consistent consistency concerning the amount of take it takes to accept and complete an application task so uh, an RTOS does not have to be fast in general but it has to be uh, do its work in a consistent manner in, in a consistent time so if the very if the time starts to vary it's not real time anymore so and then we check out c++ uh, why do we talk about c++ in this context uh, most projects for mcus are today in c like if you buy a microcontroller from a, from a vendor you get their vendor libraries like usually called sdks and it's also oh, always in C, I can say always. Uh, and if you call them or want support for C++, they say, no, switch to C. Uh, lots of the examples on the internet are in C style solutions. And as I said, for the vendors, it's a simplification for the vendors. The time to hello world uh, example is uh, from a YouTube video by Mike, or not by, but with Michael Case. It's from some C++ conference. And what he means by time to hello world is that it's very easy to get started, getting started, get started as all these courses or introduction or all is called. But when you are, have come a bit, you're basically stuck with their things. So, uh, and the most RTOS is available both uh, commercially and open source are written for and in C. But uh, we can maybe can't use the whole C++ standard in the microcontroller because of the limits of RAM and flash and uh, program memory, etc. But we still at least can use type safety, we can use templating, we can use lambdas, we can use const expert, we can use iterators, we can use constructors, we can use destructors for uh, our purpose at least. So that's a very good start, I think. So in this talk, I will I will have um, the, the RTOSs I used are usually in the ARM Cortex-M series, M3, M4, and sometimes in M0, if, you, if it says something to you. But uh, compared to the desktop PC, the microcontroller has a very limited CPU speed, counted in a few megahertz, usually. You have limits in the flash size, like the, what's the program memory. You have limits in RAM or memory, which uh, gives you that you cannot use a heap. It's very <coughs> hard or very constraining to use uh, malloc, free, or whatever it's called in your language. But what you get is like very simple direct connection to uh, the hardware, like lights, buttons, etc. And this is usually called programming close to the metal, as they say. This, this sounds cool, doesn't it? Uh, 
it has a very limited IO. We don't have a big screen where we can print debug messages. We have like, if you're lucky, we have a serial port. Um, here comes my favorite flags to the GCC compiler when, when uh, running the uh, compiling our programs. F minus F no exceptions, minus F no RTTI. So we have to disable exceptions and RTTI. So I did a non-exhaustive search on the internet, like Googling and finding some web pages with, uh, where they compare these different lists of uh, RTOSes and licensing and stuff. And I found some, some was very interesting. Uh, the first here, Boost Core, I stroke it out because of it only supports very strange old architectures, some DSP from the 90s or something like that. Uh, Distort OS, I think, uh, I have not checked it out properly. Uh, I think it's very modern and very, very interesting. I should check it out. Uh, the guy who, who works on that is uh, very uh, into C++ and the C++ embedded C++ community. I found Mio6. That's also stroken out because of the license. It has a GPL license and I don't want GPL licensed code in my microcontroller. Or my customer doesn't want GPL licensed code in their microcontrollers. And I found this SCM Artos, uh, which we'll talk about a bit more. And then uh, Correct gets an honorable mention, this Emil Fresk in Luleå. He wrote this Correct, uh, which is not the proper Artos, but it does about the same thing using template, meta programming style and things. So if you're interested, check it out. He has made some talks about it on YouTube and, uh, and uh, the source code is available there. Did you want to? I just noticed the, uh, it's a funny username. Yeah, Korken89, the Kork89 in Swedish, in English, sorry. Um, so in C++, <coughs> modern C++, we have this standard library called Standard Thread. Uh, it would be optimal if we could use this Standard Thread in the C++ library because that's already available. We don't have to have any third party <laughs> libraries. Uh, I was at a conference last year called MBU++ or something and I had a, met a Polish guy. He was from Poland but he lived in on island I think. His name is Piotr Grigorik and he has started to write uh, uh, a standard thread implementation using three toes uh, in the bottom of all, it all. So he basically wrote a wrapper and it was not easy and it was not very optimal either. Uh, uh, he had many problems which he, he managed to solve the most of them, but it was very hard journey. And here are two links you can read about his journey. I can say standard thread is not uh, designed with Artos in mind. You can, ex for instance, we will talk about that more, but you cannot give the size of your stack for, for when you're starting a thread or a process in standard thread, and that's a severe limit. Uh, my, my, think, my thinking about standard thread is they took this book, gave it to the standardization committee and said, hey, we want standard threads. So it's P threads uh, with a C++ uh, sparkle on it. Uh, yes, now we go to the actual uh, things we will look at and we will look first lo uh, we will the C++ reference is called SCM Artos. It has a MIT license which is very free and very nice. Uh, it's written by a couple of Russian guys uh, and I have no involvement with it at all. I just found it on the net, downloaded it, liked it very much and using it now. So uh, I found it has very good documentation. It has like a, a paper or whatever it's called, paper or manual. And it's over 100, 120 pages, I think it is. And it's written in, there's two versions. It's one is in Ranglish, as I call it. Very Russian English. When you, when you read it, you get this Russian accent in your head. And it's of course written one version in Russian too. So. Uh, I cannot tell if there is any difference between them because I don't understand Russian. So. 
but uh, they have if you go into this um, github they have three parts one is the core part which is like generic code for different uh, architecture you have one ports which is uh, for different architectures and different compilers and and it's a lot of sample projects you can look at and it has one directly with the documentation in it's a very simple not very simple but it's simple enough for me to grasp what what it does and how it does it and simple does not mean bad in this case in, in this case it means good it generates very small and fast code uh, as I said, I downloaded, uh, I found it on the internet and did a git clone on the repository and like started to testing out and like type make and it compiles. Oh, it compiles, no warning, no errors, that's a good start. And then I looked at the binary, it was one kilobyte. At that time I was experimenting with the uh, ST's library and I did a, like a simple blinking LED program with the ST's library and that was six kilobytes. Here I got like a complete Artos with like a, th a sixth of the size. But if you go and check this out, check the branch develop, the master branch is lagging behind as they call it. So I recommend if you go in there, look, check the branch develop. <coughs> then do we have the other one, I will not say competitor, the free Artos. Uh, it has a li the license is some kind of GPL ish. I'm not really sure. Uh, it was a single guy company that that ra ran this, and uh, like less than a year ago, I think it got bought up by Amazon because they wanted something to talk to their cloud. Everyone they want everyone to talk to their cloud, so they bought a real time operating system. There are several different commercial options. This open Artos, which is like you pay for free Artos, basically, so it's no difference. And the safe Artos, which has the same API, but in the bottom, it's it's for it's it's uh, what's it called? They have checked it that it's okay and working properly, etc. I have only seen one place they actually bought this open Artos license. It was an American company, and the first letter is three and the last letter is M in the company name. Uh, it's very widespread, this of free Artos. It's ported to very many platforms. Uh, it's, uh, if you go to a ship vendor and you get their SDK, they usually, ah, we have like an Artos option and it's usually free Artos. Uh, it has very good documentation because it's so big and so has uh, penetrated the market very well. Uh, the thing with it, it has many macros and versions of the same co command, which like I think is an, more an artifact of the C language it's written in than in actually th they have done it bad. So they have many versions and you, it's very easy to shoot yourself in the foot by selecting the wrong command. And the worst of it all, they use Hungarian notation in the API. You will see how it looks. I don't like it, but if you want to use it, then just use it. Try to like turn off your mind when you see it. So, uh, so we will check uh, some elementary function of an Artos. Uh, compare how they are, in, how we use that function in the respective Artos, and we talk about process, threads, task. I don't know what name to use. Uh, Sometimes I use process, sometimes I use thread, sometimes I use task, but it's basically the same concept. So we'll talk about mutexes. I will explain further when I will go through this what everything is, but they call mutexes. We will talk about a bit about signals and we will talk about queues. And this is what I think an R2 should supply, at least in, 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 in the, cent the core of it all. And then you can add on third part libraries like software timers, file systems, protocols like LTCPIP, memory management, that thing you can always add on, take from whatever you like and whatever you need in this certain moment. So first off, a big warning, big blocks of code will follow. So if you see a big, don't, don't be scared, don't run away. I will try to explain it. 
Uh, so process threads task. So for conceptually, it's a standalone unit. It does its thing. It's it's a. Uh, it, it doesn't, it communicates with the outer world using signals and processes and queues and etc. Uh, usually this process needs a stack with a size. You have to determine the size of the stack when you, when you start the process. And it's very hard to estimate this size. You can never really know how much stack you need. And sometimes you need a bit, maybe you meet, need a bit more. So then you increase the stack a little bit more and then leads to like over provisioning. You have like two big stacks, for instance. If you have too little, you will crash. You will get random crashes everywhere. But this over provisioning leads to the waste of memory. And very many people says that, uh, or not very many people, but some people say that I don't use artosis because they're just a waste of uh, CPU cycles, flash, memory, etc. But for me, it's a very good way to, to think about one problem at a time. I, I, I conceptualize every problem in a task and then I think about this task. So I, I really like using artosis. Sometimes it's maybe overkill, but then I don't use artos. But I usually I, I pull in an artos the first thing I do when I start a project. And this switching time uh, is between when you switch task from you're running one task and then you something happens and you switch to the next task. And that's really what sets the bar of the real time RT in the RTOS. Uh, and they try to compare and we are better than them because we have and then, but it's usually comparing oranges and apples. So take those number with a bit of grain, a bit of grain of salt. This is how you use create a task in free artos. Free artos has what I said I don't use. The, the, it has its own memory allocator. So this is the version that uses the built-in free artos memory allocator. And what you do, you have like the base type, which it's, uh, they call it the base type. And it's what's returned when you create the task. You get the handle to the task. And then you call this task create or x task create with a v task uh, function. This function is the implementation of the task. The name here is like the, the debug name, so you can understand what's happening when you debug it. You have a stack size, and then you have our favorite, the void star pointer. Uh, I will talk more, more about this void star pointer one here, but. And then we have this priority, what priority the task will have, and a pointer to the handle that, it, that this create will fill in. And if it worked, the x returned will have pd pass. Then it worked, and you can, for instance, delete the task or whatever you want to do with it. Um, here we have the Here's a bit messy with the slides, but uh, we try to explain it. This is the task, uh, example task. And it, as you see, it's the ordinary function, with, which take a void star parameter. So you can send in, in their mind, whatever you want. Uh, and uh, if you want to have a stack, like explicitly, explicitly created task for your, your, uh, your, one more, if you want explicitly set stack for your task stack. You have to define them here with a, with a buffer. It holds the information about the task. And this is the stack with the stack size, 200 for instance. And then you have to call uh, x task create static instead. And here we have this uh, different names for about the same function. And here we have the, the function in itself, the, the task, the name, the stack size, the void pointer, the priority, but here it's added the stack, a pointer to the stack, and a pointer to this uh, buffer the task uses for to keep track of what it's doing. And now it returns a handle instead. And uh, when we got the handle, as we, we can still like, do things with like suspend the task and stuff that depends on. And here's the same thing in C++. Here we de declare three tasks. Uh, you declare, you, you, this is templated parameters uh, for the OS process. 
you, you tell them the priority of the task and how big your stack should be. And then you have a, a, a process with these parameters. And then we declare the task like this. Uh, namespace OS, the SEM RTOS uses the namespace OS, which is very good, I think. And uh, then you declare a, a, a function called, uh, a method called exec in this new, newly created uh, type. And here is the actual uh, code in, for the task. In this case, we pop something from a queue and do send something out and we free it. And, and when we're done, we declare, uh, uh, we instansa instantiate this function with a name, like this human readable name. And then the process is done. We're done. Nothing more to do. We can do stuff with the process if we want to. But uh, usually when it runs, it runs. Uh, mute excess comes from the word mutual exclusion, uh, which means that you have only one process at a time can go into a critical section, for instance, accessing like an external device or modify variables that are global that several processes can access. Uh, from the mutual exclusion, you take a, a mutex and it must always be followed by a release. You must release the mutex so the next task can come in and, and do its thing. So they come pairwise, this take and release are always in the pairs. The mutexes can cause de deadlocks if you're not careful. If you take a de uh, mutex and takes a mutex and this, when it has this mutex, takes the, tries to take that mutex and that one tries to take that mutex and all of a sudden they are deadlocked waiting for each other. But you don't have to wait for a mutex release. You can just check it or if it's taken or not, or you can have a timeout. Like, yeah, if I don't get this uh, mutex in 10 ticks, then I just continue doing something else instead. So very convenient. And this is, we start off again with a free RTOS implementation. And this is slightly simpler than before. So we have like the handle, semaphore handle, and we create the mutex. Uh, we take the mutex here on the semaphore handle, and here we have like it went, waits 10, 10 ticks. And if this, we get this handle within 10 ticks, it returns PD true. Let's so do your thing here, whatever, and uh, we give it back. We give the semaphore back to the mutex. Removing all comments or error handling and stuff, I cleaned it out so, so we can see what's happening in the code actually. And it's very easy. You see, take the semaphore and uh, do your thing and give it back. And then you write your code and you realize, oh crap, what happens if this variable we had was broken? It was somehow broken, so we return. And here we have a bug. Anyone can spot the bug? It's very easy. It's, it's very, com very obvious when you see it like this, but if, if you have this massive code, it's very hard to spot. Uh, the usable spot. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The user, the user will spot it, or, or uh, like when you run the system, you're like, what is happening? Uh, you have to give back the semaphore because if you just return, we still have the semaphore and no one else will be ever forever be able to access this task or this uh, mutex again. Uh, we go into the uh, SCM RTOS version and uh, it's still much, much simpler as I, I really like this. You create your two mutex and you have like a hel helper class called mutex locker. So you create your variable called lock with my mutex. And since we have in C++ constructors and destructors, when we create this variable, the constructor will run and will lock this uh, 
uh, mutex. And then as soon as we exit here, the mutex will be automatically released because then the destructor is run. And if we look at this previous example we had from the free Arto side, if we now do this, it will work. Because as soon as we return, the, this uh, destructor will run and we will release the mutex. So it's less bugs. Very nice, very nice, we like. We come to signals. Uh, that's a simple signals between processes. It can signal like I'm done or, or there is data. I use it for interrupt signaling. I have a process waiting for this uh, signal and then when the interrupt comes it just generates a signal and exit because we don't want to be in the interrupt context for too long. And when the interrupt context is over the process starts doing its thing outside of interrupt context. I've written it can be a counting version you can have like three times it can can do the signaling and it can then it must take the thing three times so uh, and also always a special version if you're signaling in the interrupt context or not uh, in our free artos has no like uh, signals directly it has something called event groups or you can also signal directly if you know that which task you should signal to you can always use that this one last Last sentence is uh, I implemented this task signing L to an um, under free art open source artos which is written in C so that's a good thing maybe that uh, I, I implemented it and sent the pull request to the guy and he said oh very nice very good and someone asked uh, said this doesn't look what we want and so it hasn't been pulled since 2016 so now I changed to C++ and SCMR2 since then. I'm not bitter, no no. Uh, so in free auto signals we have to have an event group handle, we have to have an event group. We create the static event group with the handle. Uh, and then they have their own built-in you can do assert on, on the variables you create. Uh, here when you signal, you can s the, that this is the group thing, you can signal several things at a time. You can set bits, uh, how many bits, I don't know, but you can set bits, uh, signal from different places. So here you set like bit 0 and bit 4 and then you send this to the event group. Uh, and then you have the wait operation. Uh, here it wait for bits on the event groups and it waits for this beat, bits and you can uh, should we declare these bits when they are received etc and it's always pd true and pd false they have their whole complete uh, boolean systems in uh, free artos in scm artos it's as usual simpler i think you have you, you declare this uh, uh, event variable and then you can wait for the event or you can have a timed out event. So uh, if, if nothing happens in 110 timer ticks you can do something else. And you can signal to this event by setting the signal. If you're in an interrupt context uh, you just signal ISR instead. So this is actual code from, my, from one of my projects. Uh, yeah, you can we can, uh, yeah, uh, here we can see the OS interrupt for instance. This is uh, uh, macros that basically do extern C. It's a lot of this. You have to declare the tasks with like OS process, as you saw, and that's uh, using in GCC, it uses this attribute called no return. So the function cannot return. If it returns, you will get the compilation error, for instance, which is a good thing. Always interrupt. This interrupt handles must have the C C signature, else we get, uh, we don't want the name mangling part when you do these interrupt handlers. Queues. Mm. Queues are used to send data between processes. It's always in one direction. So if you want send something and want an acknowledge or something similar, you have to have two queues, one in each direction. 
uh, the special uh, operation when the queue is empty. If you want something from the queue and it's empty, you, have, you, you can wait. If it's full and you try to put on more data, you have to wait until someone picks out stuff from the queue. Both versions can do like, you can wait for the, or it can do a timed out. In uh, SCM RTOS, it's called channel. And a little spoiler here, like type sef safety is the thing here. But we bar start with free RTOS again. And here you have the queue length. You have to define the queue length and how big everything in <coughs> is in this queue. And you have to declare a queue. And you have to declare a storage area where it should store all data. And here you and handle queue handle and you create it with the queue length, with the I item size and the area. It should store things in and uh, the queue buffer inf information field, so to speak. Question. Yes? It looks like you would have alignment issues with that queue uh, storage area. It's allocating you in eights, but it's storing you in 64s. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. This is the, the, these examples are actually from, uh, from, the, from Free Arto's website. So I just cut, cut and paste and try to remove as much code as possible just to fit into the <laughs> slide. And here's the send version. And here we have our favorite again, void pointer. This is not type safe anyhow. But you have the queue and you have what to set, send to the queue and how long you should wait if you want to wait. And uh, here again we see this, uh, the queue, some variable casted to void star again. And you have the tick type casted, the 10 casted to some tick type. And they have usually their own Boolean system EIM <laughs> called PD pass. I don't know how many different PD things there are in this systems. And then we go to the SCM RTOS. You have some class, which is the data you want to send to on, into the queue. So you create a class or a struct or whatever. You tell the, the queue size. And you instant, uh, it's a templated. Um, uh, in class, uh, so you tell them what do you want to send and how big the queue should be and the name of it. And to insert data, you create your, your data and you take the channel dot push this data. And you have the same thing with the timeout. You can uh, uh, TX channel pop some data and the timeout. So it's the same, it's still uh, Ah, this is, this is push and this is pop. Okay, sorry. Pop is you now when it gets data from the queue. So you can wait like one second for data to come on the queue. And if it doesn't, this boolean is set and you know, oh, I didn't get any data, but I can do some other fun things while the other one's giving me data. Or you can just pop some data and then you went wait in TV, yeah, for the eternity. Yeah, the, the, yeah, exactly. Uh, if if the this uh, thing is declared on the in the process, it's on the stack. But usually, you declare these in the global context. Uh, since SM Artos is written in C plus plus, we can always extend it by inheritance. So they they write in the paper how to do this. I have tried it, done it couple of tries, but nothing fancy. But they said we, we inherit from this OST service and fill in our operations ish, something like that. Yes. Uh, this is just a quick example on how to extend it with like, I had this event flag count, which actually counts the number of times they have called the signal and wait, etc. And you just inherit from this T service and uh, process map here. Process map here is, is a 
their way to keep track of their process ID. They have a 32-bit integer as their process ID, and that sets the limit to number of processes in the system to 31, actually, because every process has its own bit in this process map. And here is a uh, an implementation of one of the functions and it has this uh, critical sec section part so if you do something always related in and just always set declare this critical section variable I'm not sure if it works or how it is but but this is like something I try to write one question yes because you call it a real uh, fine system so if you use a new tax and uh, this blocking uh, things yes Yeah, the, but the thing is, then it lets through uh, other processes in the meantime, and they can react. And when, as soon as you get data, your, if you have higher, pro, higher priority than the, the process uh, giving you the data, you will uh, start running. Yeah, but what I mean, if you use a critical section or mutex, there is no guarantee how long time it takes you to get the mutex. No, 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 exactly. But that's why you always should keep, the, keep them as short as possible. So. But, then but, but the, the, yeah, the, I cannot. Yeah, exactly. I cannot guarantee that it's always exact on time. There are scheduling at algorithms for scheduling things in a very strict fashion. And, but this is. Uh, Another type of uh, scheduling, yes. I think for clarification, it, it's uh, the RTOS, the, the uh, promise is from the OS, not from your code. No, exactly, that too. Crappy code, then it's not real time anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. If you, if you do a for loop and never releases it, then every process with lower priority will get starved out. So you have to give uh, the OS and other processes some breathing time from time to time. If you do like a tight loop, it's, it's, uh, you can be lock yourself very out of the, your own OS. But as you said, it's, it's your own fault. It's not the OS fault. <laughs> so conclusions in the very, very end. As we saw from the examples, it's a lot, a lot of boilerplate code for error handling in, in C uh, or the free RTOS implementation. So I c free RTOS is known to be bug free sounds very advanced or saying things like that, but there's a, a company that creates a static analysis, ana analyzers and they wanted to check that. Is this free RTOS? Is it bug free? So they <laughs> and started to dig into it. They get a warning or they got like three warnings and they looked up the warnings and in the code it said, this is not proper or the reason we do this is because of this. So uh, all, um, so all uh, the free RTOS is very, very nice, nicely written code. Then the legacy of C is, is the big problem for them, I think. Uh, uh, the free RTOS has the advantage of being available on all platforms because it's <coughs> probably written in a very ancient version of C. So if you have like the mi minuscule CPU, you want an RTOS, try free RTOS. They probably have a port for it. But what you get with C++ is type safety. You get the templating. You got the constructor, destructor. You got the inheritance. And what is something I really, I think is underappreciated, but I appreciate it a lot. The Boolean, true or false, a proper Boolean. Every C code I found has a different version of true and false. And free RTOS has their own, of course. So uh, the only th problem with, uh, with the C++ impl implementation is that the tasks end up in the global uh, state or in the global uh, context. Uh, and th uh, that means that uh, the constructor will start the process and since there is no way in C++ to tell which cons global constructor to run first, you have no idea which process starts first when you compile your code, which can be a bit frustrating because usually you want to start a process that reads in maybe a setting or parameters or something that the other process will use. So, 
And when that work is done, then you will start your other processes. But it does not really work that well in SC++. You can, yeah, you could probably do that. Uh, the thing is that, uh, uh, yeah, you can do that actually. Uh, the, the main drawback is that all the stacks for the processes will end up as in the stack of the main function. So that's the drawback, but I don't know how about the main stack, if you increase it and then memory is memory is memory, so. Hmm. Uh, uh, I found SEM Artos. It's a good project, actually. If you want a simple, extendable uh, Artos in C++, if you need a reference project to start embedded programming in C++, not just if you want an Artos, if you want to do C++ programming in, in an embedded environment like Cortex M3 or something, it's very nice make files, it's very nice link files, it's very nice organization of the code. It's very th thought through. There are some, some flaws here and there, like they use C style cost, etc. But else it's very nice, I, I can tell you. So thank you for me. And uh, any questions? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Arno? Uh, I'm not sure about that actually, but, but uh, the thing with uh, uh, there is slightly different in, in scheduling between this uh, uh, SEM autos is strictly priority ba priority based, while um, free autos has this round robin scheduling thing. So, but I, I'm not really sure about this uh, priority inter inheritance handling in SEM autos or free autos. Yes? I would guess that uh, this uh, real-time system, if you use C++, you are not allowed to use uh, all these uh, standard uh, template containers and everything, nothing is allowed, right? You can use a lot. You, there are limits, yes. Uh, the only, uh, what's it called, container class that is you can use is standard array, uh -huh, which is very limiting because Oh, this is cool code. I wonder how they did it. It's like standard vector. Sorry, standard vector do allocation, and so you cannot use it. So standard array is the only array or like container you can use from the standard library. But as I said, you have the other things like templates, and you have the constructor, destructor, etc. So yeah, I don't know anyone interested in a short uh, like what I have used the SCMR tools in projects I can sh show you later can I forget the one thing uh, the first project I can show you is is uh, okay it's this little thing which you can use on your shirt unfortunately that's, I don't think it has battery but you can have it on your on your shirt here and then it's a display here so it shows your animated gifs so you can walk around and show them and you can update the images via BLE so you have like an app on the phone where you download the new images to the to this little button that was actually my first C C embedded C++ project another thing i did was this uh, two wire modem two wires like Tvåtråd, as we say in Swedish, uh, with a homemade polling protocol using HDLC. For the men in green, I, as my English colleagues at the work, they looked very confused. They didn't understand the sentence men in green, but it's the army, basically. And here, this project was very good at showing the strengths of an Artos. If you have lots of communication going on, it's very, very nice to have like an Artos because so all of a sudden someone sends some, you something to you and you need to send it out and vice versa you have several communication channels going on it's very then it's very nice to have like an artos which handles all these things 
Uh, I'm currently working on a radio scanner used in car races in the US. So, but it's not the the project is not finished yet. But I used the CMR tools in in that one. So what I've added to the SCMR tools, which I have not released yet, but if you were interested to use it, I recommend them, recommend some things. For instance, updating to newer CMSs, which is the ARM library thing, because the one they ship with uses the, uh, the keyword register. And if you use a newer C++ compiler, if you go to 17, you cannot use register because it's like a reserved word and it says, here's a register, it says this variable is declared register. You cannot do that. So then you have to upgrade to a newer CMCs. They have something called TC buff. I ran CPP check on the SCMR toast code and I got a lot of warnings in this part. So I simply removed it because I didn't need it. I implemented some things that I have not released because I'm not sure about the correctness and the stability of it, but I have used it in some of my projects. So, yes, that was. If uh, no more questions, then I finished. Thank you for your interest. Yeah.